A beautiful day in Alabama. Here is the starting lineup for the Winston 500. On the front row, Benny Parsons from Ellerbee, North Carolina in the Stacy Pontiac. Qualified at over 200 miles an hour. Outside, Darrell Waltrip from Franklin, Tennessee in the Mountain Dew Buick. In row number two will be Ricky Rudd from Chesapeake, Virginia. Ricky is driving the Piedmont Airlines Pontiac. Alongside will be Terry Labonte from Corpus Christi, Texas in the Stacy Buick. Third row, Jeff Bodine from Pleasant Garden, North Carolina in the Performance Connection Pontiac. And Cale Yarborough from Timmonsville, South Carolina in the Valvoline Buick. Fourth row, Bill Elliott driving the Melling Tool Ford and Ron Bouchard in the J.D. Stacy Buick. Fifth row, Richard Petty from Randleman, North Carolina in the STP Pontiac and Dave Marcus in the J.D. Stacy Buick. 40 cars in all. We will give you more on the other drivers competing in the race as we have the time. Meanwhile, the cars come off of turn number four onto the tri-oval. And we anticipate a green this time around. The crowd rises to its feet, each cheering his particular favorite in this competition. Many drivers capable of winning this race, and we'll see speeds well in excess of 200 miles an hour. We'll see drafting, we'll see slingshotting, and right now we see the green flag as the Winston 500 from Talladega, Alabama is underway. Bob, we've visited a lot of racetracks on ESPN television the last couple of years, but I'll tell you, there is no roar greater in all of automobile racing than the start of a race at Talladega. They are two, three, four, and even five rows wide as they come out of turn two and go down the long back stretch. And it's basically a side-by-side -side competition. They're pretty much the way they started down the back stretch with Parsons on the inside, Terrell Waltrip on the outside of the front row, and Ricky Rudd and Terry Labonte in the second row still side by side through turn number four coming off 33 degree banking onto the trioval that's banked 18 degrees in front of the over 100,000 people gathered here to watch this tremendous competition it is going to be benny parsons who leads just slightly no maybe daryl waltrip by a bumper leads lap number one again into turn number one and still parsons and waltrip running side by side bob one of the most incredible first laps in the history of automobile racing it looks like they're getting ready for the start the lead draft is about 25 cars long and look at them they're still stacked up side by side ricky rudd begins to make a move on the inside and so does kale yarborough down the back stretch ricky rudd at this point yarborough running right alongside waltrip in turn number four here they come off of the banking now, entering the tri-oval once again. This track is shaped in the form of a tri-oval. There is no front straightaway. Instead of fifth turn, right here at our broad position, the starting line is located at the long end of the tri-oval near turn number one. Rudd, Waltrip, Labonte, and running in fourth position side by side would be Benny Parsons. And behind him, Richard Petty. Well, you get an idea of how quickly things can change in one lap. The driver who started on the pole, Benny Parsons, came by basically in a virtual dead heat for first place as we see Waltrip now going to the inside of Waltrip, and, uh, or rather to the inside of Rudd and following Waltrip through his Labonte. Parsons dropped from first to fourth in just one lap on this tremendously huge speedway. And Benny Parsons, though, has worked back up into third position. The leader is Darrell Waltrip coming off of the fourth turn. Right behind him, tucked in in a draft position, is Terry Labonte. In third position now would be Benny Parsons. Here they come across the start-finish line, completing lap number three. Parsons running third, running in fourth position is Jeff Bodine, and Ricky Rudd, who was leading a lap ago, is back in fifth. Well, they do happen very rapidly here. As you see, Waltrip now, a position he's become very accustomed to in the last couple of seasons on the Grand National Trail. Without a doubt, the most prolifically winning team of the past two seasons, Darrell Waltrip, the team, of course, that's headed up by the legendary Junior Johnson, the man who has put together more championships with different drivers than any other crew chief on the trail. Darrell Waltrip and Terry Labonte running 1-2. Terry Labonte is the current points leader for the Winston Cup. He is from Corpus Christi, Texas, and he is... 25 years of age, driving the J.D. Stacey Buick. Now, Darrell Waltrip puts himself uh, into front position as we complete lap number four. 
still a choo-choo train down the uh, tri-oval here as they head into turn number one again. There are about, I would say, 25 to 30 cars in this lead draft. Then we have about a uh, half a turn before we get back to the stragglers at this point. But it's a long race, Larry. Anybody can win this competition. Bob, you're exactly right on the lead draft count as we see Labonte now deciding it's time for him to take the vanguard here in this race. The first time Terry Labonte has led. They are running back in the middle of this. And we have a spin and a crash in the backstretch. David Simcoe, the young driver from Michigan, participating in his first ever Grand National race here at Talladega, has obviously made some contact with one of the retaining walls here at the Speedway. David Simcoe, who raced in an ARCA race here yesterday, he also was involved in a crash at Daytona back in February. Heavy damage to that race car. David Simcoe from Clarkston, Michigan, driving the Mound Steel Pontiac. And as you can see, the NASCAR officials have moved into a position to signal the drivers that the racetrack is under caution. It looks like David Simcoe is okay. He has crawled out of his race car. And so we will take this break. You're watching live coverage of the Winston 500 from Talladega, Alabama. We have laps completed, and Terry Labonte is a leader. Back at Talladega, Alabama, where the Winston 500 is under caution. Here is the top ten at this time, and we have completed six laps. The leader, Terry Labonte, running in second position is Benny Parsons. Third is Darrell Waltrip. Fourth is Jeff Bodine, and fifth is Ricky Rudd. Running in sixth position, Dale Earnhardt. Seventh is Richard Petty. Eighth, Ron Bouchard. Ninth is Cale Yarborough. And tenth is Bobby Allison. We had taken you through the top five rows. Here are the other starters. In the sixth row, Mark Martin and Bobby Allison. Seventh row, Buddy Baker and Harry Gant. Eighth row, Kyle Petty and Morgan Shepard. In the ninth row, Donnie Allison and Elliot Forbes Robinson. The tenth row, Neil Bonnet and Dale Earnhardt. In the eleventh row, Joe Rutman and Rick Wilson. The twelfth row, Lenny Pond and Tim Richmond. Row number thirteen, Philip Duffy. And in the uh, outside of front number 13 is Lowell Cowell. The 14th row, Steve Moore and Lake Speed. 15th row, David Simcoe and John Anderson. Row number 16, D.K. Ulrich and Buddy Arrington. 17th row, Jimmy Means and Jody Ridley. Row number 18, Tommy Gale and L.W. Wright. The 19th row, Slick Johnson and J.D. McDuffie. And in row number 20, Bill Scott and Farrell Harris. We are yellow because of an accident involving David Simcoe. This racetrack is indeed fast. Some specifications on it for you. As we walk the hot pace car, the track is 2.66 miles in length. The north and south turns are banked at 33 degrees. The tri-oval is 4,300 feet in length and banked at 18 degrees. The back stretch is 4,000 feet. The racing surface is 48 feet wide and a 12-foot apron. The retaining wall is four feet high in the tri-oval and seven feet at the grandstand. You really cannot get an idea of how steeply banked these turns are until you get right down on the racing surface. Larry Newber had an opportunity to examine a little bit more closely exactly how steep these turns 